and welcome to the very first episode of Black Gold. It is a series here for Black History Month that I have dedicated to you, to our narratives, to just overarching Black history and the legacy that we have created. It is entitled Black Gold for various reasons, of course obvious reasons, However, the main reason is kind of like a little tribute to Esperanza Spaulding. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but she's an amazing singer and instrumentalist. And um, growing up, there were two major songs that were just really, really pivotal in just putting into a song the way I feel and just uh, about my blackness and that pride that I feel and that joy that I feel in being black and a part of this gorgeous and amazing African diaspora. And those two songs are, of course, Black Gold by Esperanza Spaulding, um, which I definitely encourage you to go and check out, and also the song Unbreakable by Alicia Keys. You can find it on her Unplugged album. I also definitely recommend watching the music videos because they just it has that kind of just vibe that just gives you so much pride in who you are. So, so today is February 3rd, 2018, and February 3rd is National Woman Physicians Day. And as both a pre-med student and an African American studies major, I figured that I would share with you some of the remarkable women who have really paved the way for women like me, women of color in general, to pursue medicine, whether it be nursing, um, as physician assistants, or as physicians, as doctors. Alright, so first I wanted to start off with our nurses. Nurses are the backbone of medicine, if I have to say that myself. So Susie King Taylor was a nurse. She served as an army nurse during the Civil War and what's so remarkable about her is that she taught soldiers how to read and write during a time in which a black woman or a black person in general knowing how to read and write was absolutely unheard of and could co would cost one's life for even knowing how to read and write. So she served as an army nurse in the Civil War. She taught soldiers how to read and write while also nursing them back to health from diseases such as dysentery and also small Pox. Mabel Keaton Stoppers was an incredible woman and she was incredible in reaching and attaining and fighting for racial equality for nurses, for black nurses, in both the U.S. Army and the American Nurses Association. Betty Smith Williams was instrumental in co-founding the National Black Nurses Association. Mary Seacole was born in Jamaica and she served as an army nurse during the Crimean War. She traveled from Jamaica to England to seek um, a volunteer opportunity to, opportunity to become a army nurse. She was denied, refused from that position, and so what did she do? She took her own funds, she raised her own money, made her way to the Crimea, which is a peninsula in Eastern Europe, and she established the British Hotel, which served soldiers who were injured, who were wounded, um, and who were sick. And she basically provided comfort and also treatment for any disease or illness that they were dealing with. Okay, this next woman is Mary Eliza Mahoney. She became the first black woman to be trained, to study, and to work, and to be a registered nurse in the United States. An absolutely incredible woman. And out of the 40 women who were in entering her nursing class, she was one of three women to gra actually graduate as a registered nurse. So we all know Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, who were incredible women in their own right and really did pave the way for so many women, men and children, and were vanguards of an, a revolution, and of an ideology of emancipation, of reaching independence, of black self-worth, and they did so single-handedly. But what many people don't know is that both Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth served as nurses. Harriet Tubman, in addition to serving as so many other things, including a, um, an army spy, she also served as an army nurse, serving many soldiers who were sick with dysentery and smallpox. And Sojourner Truth, up until her emancipation in 1865, of course, she served as an, a nurse for a family that she was living with while enslaved. Estelle Massey Osborne was the first black woman to obtain her master's in nursing in 1901. And like Mabel Keaton Stopper, she was also instrumental in fighting for the rights and the rights to education for black nurses. So now we're moving on to our list of physicians who have done remarkable things within the United States and really have paved the way for me as a future physician. So the first physician I'd like to mention is Dr. Alexa Kennedy, and she became the first black woman neurosurgeon in the United States. Dr. Patricia Bath became the first black woman to complete her residency in 1973 in ophthalmology. She also became the first black woman to receive a medical patent for her invention of the laser phaco probe. This probe was instrumental and game-changing, really, to cataract treatment. 
She invented the laser phago probe in 1986. This next woman is absolutely incredible. If we haven't already had an amazing list of incredible black women already, this woman will blow your mind. Dr. Jane Cook Wright was an incredible, incredible, incredible physician. She is best known for her influence and her development of chemotherapies that are used for cancer treatment. She completely revolutionized cancer research as we know it today. She also became the highest ranking black woman at a nationally recognized medical institution, New York Medical College. And if that wasn't enough, her father, she comes from a legacy of greatness, her her father became one of the first black men to graduate from Harvard's medical school. Dr. Jocelyn Elders became the first black woman to hold the position as the U.S. Surgeon General and she became only the second woman to do so. She also became the first person in Arkansas to be board certified in pediatric endocrinology. The next woman is Dr. Rebecca Lee Crumpler. She was the first black woman to obtain her medical degree in the United States. Born in Delaware as a free woman, she entered medical school in 1860 and graduated in 1864. If we just think about the context in which all of this took place, she graduated and attended, first of all, she attended and was educated in medical school as a black woman during a time in which black men, women, children were, were still enslaved. And she graduated just one year before emancipation. So just thinking about the power of that in and of itself and for a black woman to not just be educated, but to be educated to that degree, to receive a medical degree, is absolutely incredible. After the Civil War, she relocated her practice from Boston to Richmond, Virginia, with the intent of serving newly freed black men, women, and children who were of course denied access and resources to healthcare and healthcare services. But if that wasn't enough, she became one of the first black people in general to publish a medical book entitled The Book of Medical Discourse. This book was dedicated to women, um, not only just to teaching them how to take care of themselves health-wise, but also how to take care of their families in the best way possible. That became an influential book and absolutely something that was unheard of during the times to not only equip women with knowledge of how to take care of themselves, but also how to take care of their families and to really just build communities um, through medicine, through health. Dr. Claudia Thomas became the first black woman to become an orthopedic surgeon in the United States. And last but not least, I wanted to include someone who inspires me as a practicing physician right now um, and inspires me as a pre-med student as someone who wants to achieve and wants to become a physician myself, Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. Dr. Nadine Burke Harris is someone who's influential and inspirational to me because not only is she Jamaican, but also she is just an absolutely amazing physician. As a physician one day, I hope to become a pediatrician serving our underserved youth. And so what she does within her communities in California is absolutely incredible. And she is really, really, really one of those people who is instrumental in linking adverse effects of trauma and stress in, in one's childhood to adulthood um, health issues and health deficiencies. So. So, if you weren't aware, many, many, many black men, women, and children were used as medical experiments, mainly because they were disenfranchised. Black, many of whom were from poor families, um, lived in environments that weren't necessarily supportive of their flourishing and prospering and growth. Many researchers, scientists, and physicians took that and used that to their advantage, even during slavery, um, and used these men, women, and children as means to furthering their understanding and global understanding of medicine. The first woman I would like to mention is Miss Henrietta Lacks. And I read her book, uh, the book about her life, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which I definitely recommend you all to read, um, in addition to seeing the movie as well, and just watching whatever you can on learning more about her as a human, because a lot of times we tend to just focus on herself and not who she was as a woman. During her time of the, her most vulnerable time of being diagnosed with cancer, she was exploited. She was exploited for her cells, which proved to be immortal, still living to this day. Her cells, without her cells, we would not have the polio vaccine. We would not understand certain aspects of how cells and how humans react in space. We would not understand nuclear testing and toxins and the response of cells to those elements. We would not understand HIV and AIDS or even cancer. And to this day, her cells are used in creating anti-tumor medication. So her cells really have been instrumental um, to the grandscape of medicine. And she truly is the mother of modern medicine because without her and without her cells, 
we would not have half of the advancements in technology and medicine that we have today. And then the last three women um, I would like to talk about together, their names are Lucy, Betsy, and Anarka. These three women were enslaved women um, and were used for medical experimentation during slavery. There was a man by the name of Dr. J. Marion Sims, and throughout the country he is recognized as the father of modern gynecology. He is known as the father of gynecology, period, and a lot of times if you go throughout the United States you'll see statues of him in various places, which for me personally is absolutely ridiculous. Um, it's ridiculous to have a statue of him without acknowledging those three women and countless other women who were exploited for their bodies, were exploited for the advancement of medicine, for the sake of medicine. Medicine was put over the human rights of these women and countless other men and women who were exploited not only by J. Marion Sims, but by many medical researchers scientists and physicians. Um, these three women were slaves, like I said, and they were subjected to mutilation, um, poking and prodding, all types of abuse. They really are the reason why we understand the female reproductive system, obstetrix, and also gynecology. These women are the mothers of modern gynecology and obstetrics because without them, we would not understand anything really about our reproductive systems. There are so many other countless faces and names of women who have served as medical experiments um, against their will, who have endured some very, very horrifying ordeals and really are the reason why we have the things we have today and I just want their names to live on. So this video is long enough. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for being here and I hope that you'll join me in these next few videos throughout the month of February. And hopefully this will kind of open doors to you understanding and seeking more knowledge on not just women within medicine but how women have really invaded um, uh, invaded white dominated spaces and made them their own and really did so with the most unapologetic attitude and with the most confidence and intelligence. Share your feedback, your comments, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to share any feedback that you might have on this particular topic. Is there other things that you know about this topic that I didn't get the chance to mention? Definitely let me know down below in the comment section, and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget how amazing and royal and incredible you are, and that black gold that just lives right inside of you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.